Good morning guys. So today we are on the hunt for the best English breakfast in Singapore. We are very excited to try this place. So we're going to a place called the Red Line, which is actually connected to Smith's Fish and Chips. Now, if you haven't seen my video already, we did a video on the best British fish and chips in Singapore, which honestly was delicious. But today we are gonna go see how this English breakfast lives up to English breakfast that you would typically find back in the UK. So I think to British people, a proper English breakfast, we also call it a fry up because generally the food is mainly all fried. It's very, very greasy and you would go to a cafe that you may call a greasy spoon. Typically in Singapore, English breakfast you would be able to find at brunch places, which is usually quite bougie and more fancy than an English breakfast would typically be back in the UK. So we're gonna go check it out now. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. So here we are, here is the weekend breakfast menu. So it serves Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. So these are the different breakfast choices that they have. So they have full English breakfast, poached eggs on toast, uh, bacon, egg and tomato bap, which sounds amazing. Baked beans on toast, which is a very British dish. If you're Singaporean, let me know if you've had baked beans on toast before. Full English breakfast is what I'm going for. But this is typically like a, no, like a working man's breakfast. So if you're a builder or you're working on construction sites, typically you would meet up with the guys or girls and go for a full English breakfast before you start the day. Some people would eat it seven days a week. When I worked offshore, some of the guys set every day, seven days a week, full English breakfast. Not for me, uh, but definitely when you're low on energy and you or you're hungry, it's a good way to start the day. Okay, so the price of the English breakfast is a whopping $22. In the UK, that would probably set you back about $10, including probably a cup of tea. So it's about double the price here, um, but that's what you get for exotic British food in Singapore. Yeah, they have a really nice selection. They also have omelettes. They have English crumpets. If you guys have never tried crump crumpets, you should definitely come here and try it. It's best served with butter and marmite, I think. But yeah, like I said, I think we're gonna go ahead and get the English breakfast. Yeah. You get one as well? Yeah, I'm gonna get one. We've just seen the price of the baked beans on toast. <laughs> yeah, I do beans on toast. Uh, beans on toast, I love it. Um, but it's like a poor family. Meal. It's like a poor, poor slash working class family yeah. meal that you would feed your kids beans on toast. One dollar for a tin of beans, one dollar for a loaf of bread. But here it's $12. $12 for one <laughs> <laughs> right, Justin's gone for builder's tea, which just is basically an English breakfast tea with milk, of course. A tea is not complete without a milk, I'm afraid, guys. How much did that cost? $3.50 for a cup of tea. Okay, here it is. We waited a very long time for this. We were waiting nearly an hour, so we are absolutely starving. But what do we have? We've got two fried eggs, baked beans, bacon, English breakfast, you typically use back bacon. So it's not as fried as, I guess, as, as Americans would fry their bacon, but it's really, really good nonetheless. We've got two sausages, very little sausages, actually. They look like some kind of herb sausage. We have fried mushrooms and tomatoes. Chips, which isn't always typically served on an English breakfast, is it? but sometimes you do get it especially in like greasy spoon places and then we have some i think this is supposed to be fried bread in singapore i don't know what it is but the toast is never really toast toasted so it's more like bread it's not toast toast but this does look delicious so we're gonna go ahead and tuck in now and i'll let you know how it tastes let's talk condiments for your english breakfast we've got ketchup always a nice big dollar like the brown sauce, don't you? This one, yeah. HP sauce, chili sauce is a no. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not today. What are your thoughts so far? Nice. Very nice. I like the chips with it, actually. I, the chips give it a little something extra. If you're ever going to eat an English breakfast, the best drink to have to complement your English breakfast is an orange juice. And I mean fresh 
orange juice. For some reason there is no better way to wash down your greasy breakfast than with an orange juice, trust me. So these sausages are actually really delicious, probably one of the highlights of this breakfast. They've got um, like a really lovely herb flavour filling. I think they're really delicious. It doesn't look like you like that very much. <laughs> yeah, I like the beans. Many, many beans. You didn't like the sausages? I thought they were really nice. I am in food coma mode mm -hmm. for sure. That was really, really yummy, but I am so full right now. So I'm going to go through the positives and the negatives. Positives, the sausages were really delicious. I really like them. And I also really liked how they added chips on the plate. We really like the baked beans. I think they used proper Heinz baked beans, so they were delicious as well. And the eggs were well cooked also. The fried eggs, they were really delicious. Portion size as well was really, really big. A nice big portion for $22, you would hope so anyway. Things they could improve on, quite disappointed about the fried bread. It definitely wasn't fried bread. Um, it was more just like bread. I think they toasted it slightly, but in a proper English fry up, the fried bread is literally fried and it's crispy and golden and you just didn't get that here. I think they could have thrown in a hash brown. I think that would have been really nice. And obviously just the waiting time. We waited almost an hour. It might just be because I don't know. Honestly, we came at like 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning and it was pretty much empty. So we're not too sure why it took so long. But do we think it's worth the price? I think it's probably the most authentic English breakfast that we've had in Singapore so far. So for you, if you're looking for like a bit something a bit more authentic and not so much a brunch style, um, you should definitely come and check this one out. Hi right, guys, so I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Do comment down below and let me know where your favourite place is to get an English breakfast in Singapore because I would love to know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content and we will see you in the next one. Bye!